Well, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the Name Block Deep Dive for Resellers and Registrars. My name is Pinky Brand, and I'll be presenting today along with my colleagues, Rolf Larson, Michael Halverson, and Lars Jensen. This webinar is meant to give resellers and registrars that are interested in using Name Block a better understanding into our marketplace platform. This session will be recorded and we will provide a link to all of the attendees afterward. While we welcome any registry operators that may be logged in today, I do want to note that this webinar is intended primarily for resellers and registrars. But with that said, there's plenty of information that I think um, everyone's gonna find useful. Uh, during the next hour, Rolf will start off explaining our vision and our solution. And then I will go over the block categories and products, plus our algorithms and how that provides revenue opportunities without cannibalizing standard revenue. And then Lars is going to chime in and he's going to explain the amazing revenue opportunity that is here in front of us and in some of the top line revenue examples to go with that. And then buckle up for Michael's deep dive into the technical aspects of our platform the checkout process for retail registrars, our API, and the web portal for corporate registrars. Then you're going to hear back from me as I'll get into some of the policy and the onboarding details and the launch schedule matters that will allow you to implement the name block. Um, our chat window is enabled, and we also invite you to raise any questions in the Q&A uh, window that is going to be managed by Kevin Copas. And then we plan to get into those questions during the Q&A portion of today's session. So now let's get going. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over the mic uh, to Rolf Larson. Take it away, Rolf. Thank you, Pinky. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, just want to uh, start by talking a little bit about what name blocking uh, or domain name blocking uh, really is. Um, uh, some of you uh, in uh, attending here are already providing those services, and uh, I'm assuming that most uh, of the rest of you know about blocking, but um, perhaps haven't um, uh, dived so much into it uh, so far. Uh, so uh, domain blocking, that's, uh, that is a mechanism that registries can uh, deploy to their uh, provisioning system. Uh, it's uh, a list of domains that are um, blocked from registration. Uh, so if you block a domain name, uh, it will not affect domains that are already registered, but uh, it will affect uh, domain names that are not registered uh, when they are uh, being tried uh, to be registered. Uh, so this is this is uh, uh, the same type of mechanism that are being used for other uh, lists that the registries already have that are restricting uh, registrations on certain domain names. And uh, and these names um, uh, will, of course, affect domain names that are registered in the way that if they um, expire, uh, then a, a registered domain name will end up into this uh, blocking list and not being able to be re-registered again. Uh, so that's the only way it, it, it affects uh, uh, registrations. Um, so uh, these um, uh, domain blocking mechanisms uh, is, of course, uh, uh, something that uh, that uh, some registries have deployed already, uh, but most registries uh, are not uh, supporting this uh, as of uh, yet, and, and that is uh, part of our. Uh, initiative is to to uh, help uh, enable uh, registries uh, to to do this uh, um, uh, by uh, using our uh, service. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, let's talk a little bit about our, our vision. I mean, why, why are we doing this, and and um, and what we are, are we trying to accomplish? Um, so our, our vision is uh, to uh, deal with domain name blocking uh, uh, in the focus of uh, preventing uh, DNS abuse. Uh, that, that's where we're coming from. And of, uh, obviously, you, you might have different motives of, of blocking domain names, but, but the, the services that we are building has that primary focus of uh, blocking uh, domain names that uh, should not be legit domain names, uh, meaning uh, domain names that uh, 
that uh, would rather be a cost center for all involved parties than uh, a revenue opportunity. Uh, and uh, obviously everyone is dealing with DNS abuse uh, today, managing uh, everything after it happens, uh, blocking uh, the, the relevant names, blocking those names that have the highest um, uh, possibility of, uh, of abuse. Um, uh, is uh, the the most effective way to to uh, prevent it from happening in the first place. So that that's where we're coming from. Um, we we want to uh, create a solution that uh, that uh, also uh, uh, unites all the blocking mechanisms that are out there, uh, uh, because not not all of them will of course come from from us. Uh, there are registries that already have deployed their own. Their own uh, mechanisms, and and we are uh, working to onboard uh, all of them into this, say, uh, marketplace of of blocking that uh, that we uh, are providing, and uh, and this marketplace is uh, is um, uh, of course uh, also a place where you will find our blocking mechanisms, uh, where we want to uh, try to onboard the entire industry. Um, uh, meaning CCTLDs, uh, GTLDs, and uh, everyone out there, uh, so that they more easily can uh, can support blocking and and support blocking products that um, that uh, say makes their uh, zone file become cleaner uh, of uh, DNS abuse. Um, so that's. Uh, uh, that's our vision uh, when it comes to uh, uh, where we are in in uh, uh, in this uh, uh, industry. We are between players of of registrars and registries. We are a service that uh, are being uh, used uh, uh, of of uh, all involved parties. Um, but uh, most of all, we are we are uh, an extension of the registry. Um, uh, meaning that we will integrate to the registry's backend services um, and uh, uh, maintain those blocking lists that are being provisioned. Uh, and it will be the registrars uh, or the resellers uh, that um, that connects to us and and uh, and uh, buys those um, blocks that are are being uh, provisioned. So, so we are uh, an independent player between. Uh, between all parties, um, and uh, we'll we'll stay uh, that way. Um, uh, we have multiple uh, ways to um, to access our service, which uh, both uh, Pinky and and Michael will um, uh, talk about more uh, later. So I think uh, over to you, Pinky, to talk uh, more about the product and uh, and the opportunity. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Rolf. Um, so name block, it was going to, will offer multiple blocking categories and associated products. And some of which are going to be available during the normal registrar, you know, process, just like a, an SSL cert or website hosting, for example. So one such blocking category is going to be our abuse shield blocking. And this will be blocking a range of between 150 and 300 domain name variants of a term in most cases, right about 200. And this includes suffixes, homoglyphs, common misspellings generated by the name block variance algorithm, which I'll get into. Uh, the number of domains in the block will be dependent upon the on the uh, on the term name, the seed name. It's designed to be frictionless. So we're not going to be requiring any kind of SMD file or any verification for this particular block category. And with this again, this block is not blocking a label or, or a domain name. It's blocking a variance of that of that label. And we believe that this is going to be the really big selling opportunity um, for you. Uh, so other more elaborate blocks are going to be offered, such as exact match blocking. So, you know, blocking the domains that exactly match the term. And I'll, I'll get into a little bit more about that in just a bit. And then further down the road is wildcard blocking. So, you know, that's the nuclear option of sorts. You know, it blocks anything to the left or to the right of a block label. Um, a, a block is applied after a third party, you know, registers a domain name that matches one of the labels that might be included in, in the wildcard block, uh, for example. We don't plan again to offer this initially, but sometime after our initial launch. And we'll be very selective about this particular category and will certainly require verification for that option. 
Um, we will also welcome third-party blocking services to the name block marketplace. In that spirit, we're working diligently with third-party blocking uh, services at, at present, such as the familiar you know, DP mail, uh, to integrate that service into the name block platform. So we believe that will expand the availability of these third-party blocking services to a wider audience. But in particular, registrars will be able to connect um, via a single API. Uh, and not only to the third party blocks, but also to any other third, any other third party block, but any other extension that might come along the way that hasn't offered blocking before that would like um, to do so and gets on the name block platform. So you'd be able to manage it all in one place. So uh, getting back to the anti-abuse variant category product, um, I would like to introduce Abuse Shield. As mentioned earlier, we want to make the internet a better place by preventing abuse. And we need better shields. Yeah. So thus, for the first time, we're going to be providing a frictionless way for anyone to shield their good names from DNS abuse by bad actors, but to do it at a very reasonable cost and without cannibalizing standard registration revenue. So in order to do this properly, one needs really good data. And thus, NameBlock is going to be using real-time data from IQ Global. And if you're not familiar with IQ, we currently scan over 200 million domains daily for abuse and service hundreds of extensions, including country code extensions and leading registrars with our abuse scanning and management products and, and services. We've been doing this for years, and we understand as well as registries and registrars that detecting and managing abuse after it happens is a cost center. It costs you money and it costs everyone money. However, we believe that the data the name block will utilize uh, from IQ combined with the name block service will help us to all prevent abuse before it can happen rather than dealing with it after it happens. And so, um, Again, we are blocking variants of a label, not the label itself. There won't be any TMCH or WIPO checks or any verification required for this, this product as we're blocking the variants of the label. There are other requirements as it relates to the seed label characters and what will be excluded from the variant list and unblocking a variant. And you can get all that information by, by signing our NDA. Just go to our website. You can get that done if you haven't uh, done that yet. Um, but with that said, let's get into a little bit of the secret sauce on our algorithms for Abuse Shield. And on this slide, what you see right now describes how we're going to prevent DNS abuse with Abuse Shield and welcome uh, and generate revenue opportunities. And it's easy to figure out an exact match block, but how do you go about finding out which variants of a domain name that you should block? And that's not really easy to grab out of thin air. So first off, um, as I said before, we're not blocking a label or blocking uh, or a registered domain name with abuse shield, the anti-abuse block. We're not doing that. We are blocking the variants. And as I mentioned, we're going to be leveraging the IQ Global's data. Thus, name block will have access to, again, a very large repository of abuse reports. 40 million is what is in that database right now, more than 40 million. And it's growing by more than 40,000 per day. So from that repository, we can extract patterns and patterns on which the domain variants are most used frequently for phishing, malware, botnets, spam, and scam, all that bad stuff, including seeing trends from recent world events like COVID and Ukraine, crypto, so forth. So using this abuse intelligence and using string similarity algorithms, if the domain name is taken on other top level domains, or if it's a dictionary term, or if there are other brands using the same term, all that input goes into that funnel you see on the screen. And that could literally be hundreds, if not thousands of potential variants, which would drive anyone crazy. Um, but hey, we can score each variant, enabling us to categorize and filter the block label variants and distill it down to a most likely candidate for abuse list. And that's one of the outputs. That's the, the domain list. And that's what you can sell. That's the abuse uh, shield anti 
abuse blocking product. So that output is going to be roughly 200 variant strings that would normally never be registered by anyone except for bad actors with the intent to engage in activities that would be harmful to a legitimate rest, uh, registrant. But wait, um, that's not all. As I said, we don't want to be cannibalizing standard uh, revenue. We will also be generating a valuable domains list that you see there on the bottom. Uh, it's, it's a list of available names that we believe should be considered for standard hand registration. And we will also generate a list of taken domains that the registrant should consider monitoring or disputing or acquiring. And the reason why we filter, again, is to minimize the chance of blocking legit domains and thus not limiting the internet namespace and reducing the likelihood of blocking disputes. So all this magic is going to be done in the background so that in a retail registrar purchase flow, there's no decision making or work is going to be required by the customer in selecting the, the variants. This is going to be done automatically. There's only a decision to buy is really going to be needed. And if you're a reseller or consultant or corporate registrar, we believe that this variant data can also offer you some further revenue opportunities. And our exact match blocking product, um, it describes exactly what it'll do. It'll does it, you know, it blocks domains exactly by uh, matching the block label. Um, the standard uh, is an SMD file. Uh, but for extensions that may have special requirements, we will uh, support those. You know, we do want to be flexible. Um, we won't be including names on a registry, registry's exclusion list, you know, a list of names that they specify that, that can't be blocked. You know, for example, this could include their reserve names or premium names, for example. Um, so we believe we're going to be opening up a lot of new markets with this exact match blocking and distribution um, that previously hasn't been there for registries that have been able to participate in this sort of thing. And I would like to note that we are giving each domain extension that integrates into the name block platform uh, the flexibility to opt in to the product. So it's not going to be an all or, or nothing deal. So they some might offer abuse shield and and the exact match a blocking and perhaps wildcard blocking once it becomes available. And others may only offer abuse shield or exact match. But no matter what blocks are offered um, from any participating extension, it will all be provisioned via our single API. And meaning so that you as a registrar don't have to integrate each time a new extension or block product comes on board or as third party um, blocking products are, are integrated. So um, now I'm gonna turn over the microphone to Lars Jensen, who is going to dig into the amazing opportunity for resellers and registrars and some numbers to go along with those comments. Lars. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this fantastic explanation on the products. I think it's uh, pretty clear for everybody, um, but I will still to go into some more details on the revenue opportunities here. Starting uh, with the exact match, I think uh, we can all see that it's a very easy to explain our product. Um, the value of the product is easy to explain to any corporate, to any um, larger company, trademark holders. And we will be opening up, as Pinky already mentioned, new potential revenue streams uh, with onboarding CC GLDs um, and yeah, any other uh, GLDs extensions there. Um, the data that we uh, are getting from uh, these uh, products will also generate different reports and other consulting uh, products that we will also make available for uh, registrars and resellers uh, that are on board here. Um, and it's a great opportunity for, for registrars and, and resellers to really build a new revenue stream um, and at the same time uh, reduce abuse, prevent abuse not, uh, we will focus a little bit more on the abuse, which uh, shield, which is the new thing in this year. I think uh, exact match has been very nice explained by Pinky. So um, if we look at the abuse shield here, basically the market is, is an unlimited market. It could be a company, a single person, an influencer. Um, there's no requirements on the trademarks. There's no ICANN fees. 
It's going to be very easy to access and set up for registrars through the API. We're going to support multiple languages. Uh, we are planning on IDN support as well. And the whole generation of the block is going to be uh, automatically. So it's going to be very easy for any registrar to, um, to, to set up as well. Um, if you go to the next slide, Pinky, yeah. Here we have some examples. So the abuse, as uh, Michael will show later on as well, uh, is is going to be a traditional, what we call traditional checkout uh, product, uh, which is going to be super easy for the end user to sign up to. Uh, they basically just have to take one decision and say, yes, I would like this. And it will then visualize as well a list of the names that will be blocked. Um, so it will be really easy right away for the end user to see what's the value for me when I click on yes. There's no uh, difficult questions that needs to be answered or any other decisions that needs to be taken. Um, and also for registrars, as we see it, there's basically no support needed uh, for this product. As soon as the block is running, it's there. Um, we see very high uh, renewal rates on a product like this. And the numbers that we are looking at here, which is giving some examples here, of course, um, but let's imagine you are doing uh, 30,000 you create a month, you would uh, have a retail price on 99 of the abuse shield and 5% of your clients would say yes to this uh, amazing product. Um, it would generate around 150K monthly in revenue for you. Um, and as I said, I would say from, from our expectation, a renewal rate definitely above 75%. Uh, on these. So there's, um, we are all looking at very nice renew renewals uh, as well. In this. So yeah, it's uh, really easy to onboard for, for registrars, as uh, said, and it's easy to sell, it's easy to explain. The value is created immediately for the end user, um, and there's nothing that needs to be done after that. So um, and if you want, as Pink said, more information, uh, if you haven't signed the NDA, sign the NDA and they get back, we'll get back to you. And then you can have more details on the pricing and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Lars. Uh, thank you for taking us through that. I think, um, yeah, as you were saying, if, if you haven't signed our NDA, you'd like to get more information on the cost structures and wholesale pricing, all that sort of thing. Um, you know, we're happy to do that. So we'll get more into that a bit later. But now it's time to turn it over to Michael Halverson, who will take us into a deep dive into the name block marketplace platform and all the magic that has been created <laughs> to translate this into some revenue. Michael, take it away. Thank you, Pinky. Thank you. So <clears throat> I was uh, thinking to start kind of like with an overview of the platform to put things into perspective. Um, about how the platform works and, and how to connect and, and interact with it. So basically it will be the block registrants that will interface with, with you, the block resellers or registrars. Um, name block, we will provide uh, two methods of uh, interfacing with the platform, which is uh, the API and, and the dashboard. And, and you can also use a combination of the two. That's, um, that's fine. And the platform itself will, as, as mentioned here, uh, do the provisioning of the, of the block um, and connect to the, the registries and the registry backend providers and maintain this block list um, um, on their behalf. And in the platform itself, and also in kind of like in the logic for, for building the platform, we had some choices to make when, when building the, the platform and putting the products together. Um, what they've chosen to do is to very closely emulate um, the domain lifecycle. So, so the blocks also will have a, a block create and a, a block renew and a block delete and a block transfer and so on. So it should be familiar to, to how domains work. And going down that path, as well, we have also chosen to uh, set up a DNS server that can be quire, uh, queried in order to find out if a domain name is blocked or not. So this is just a convenience thing, but it also can be used in uh, in conjunction, for example, with uh, with the name spinner for that the registrar has. 
to look up a domain and exclude it from the list of domains that are presented. Uh, we will, of course, also offer a, a low latency API that can be used for the same purpose, but um, it's just a, a service that will be open for the public. The same thing will be with a Whois uh, or RDAP server um, that can be queried by the public. Um, as similar to, to how Whois and RDAP works today, we will not expose any GDPR sensitive information or any data about the registrant. It's more that you can see the create dates, the renew date um, of the block. You could also see the block status, and you could also see who the block registrant is and their abuse contact. So leveraging um, industry standards in that sense. So I was thinking to quickly show you the API and then also move over to the um, the dashboard and show you the two ways of interacting. So when it comes to the API, it's obviously not going to read through the whole documentation here, but I can say from the principles of developing the APIs, um, we interact with a lot of APIs ourselves and we try to make these as we would like them to be if we were connecting to them and try to make them as simple as possible. So it's basically, a slash block slash create and then the domain name and su uh, supply a term, a registrant ID, um, and that's basically it. Um, you can then query back to get the list of domains that are blocked or the, the valuable domain names. There's an endpoint for releasing a block and so on. So our attempt here is to make this uh, easy to integrate with. Um, it should be fairly easy for a developer to understand and get going on, on doing this, uh, the integration part. Um, then I was thinking to log into to the dashboard. Um, and what we could show is, um, is an example of how the variant spinner works. This user interface would not be used by, by any registrar. It's more a sandbox to play around with the algorithms. And we could, for example, try Walmart. Uh, putting Walmart as a block label into the algorithm generates, uh, in this case, 217 different variants. The length of the input label is very influential in terms of the number of variants that it generates. Uh, but this will be capped uh, at the maximum limit where we kind of like we will score the most important variants and, and choose them. It's also sensitive towards the, the letters. So for example, U is a homoglyph letter that has a lot of different variants. So putting in the U there will generate 232 variants versus a T that will reduce it to 217. So, the algorithms that produces these variants, uh, it's like briefly mentioned before, there's, uh, we have a handful um, of the different variants that does this. Um, and we could, for example, turn on the domain status check and mm -hmm. look at taking domains and abuse affixes, uh, for example, sort by that. Um, and in, in the example of um, of a Walmart, let's see if we generate the output there and we do by algorithm and look at the abuse affixes. We can see, for example, for Walmart, that's, that there's quite a few um, variants here that, that's already registered and just illustrates kind of like where it could be wise to block uh, the, the variant. So, for example, Walmart with uh, with a hyphen uh, before the dot com, it's registered. Walmart login is also registered, and these are you know examples of clear abuse or potential malicious registrations. Uh, Walmart login uh, login is not very likely to be used by anybody with with good intentions. I would say. So examples of on, on how they are generated, you can also, I see if I can come up with a good um, 
I think Chile is a good example of how the algorithm algorithm would uh, filter based upon. Let me see. Let me do a lot of that. Would filter the variants based upon if they are um, um, excluded or not. So actually now it's doing a DNS lookup of all of these variants. So it can take a few minutes. So let's see. Chile, it's a live demo this, so things can happen. Um, so we should look at Chile and the ones that it wants to exclude from the list. So it generated 176 and 79 variants, where 28 of them are deemed to be not eligible for, for blocking. And we can look for the reasons for that. And we can see that, for example, three of the permutation or variants are actually dictionary terms. So they will be excluded. Uh, for example, there's a existing trademark on Chile that will be also removed. And same with Chile. Um, and also Chile, it's a country name and it's a reserve label. So this is an example of how it will filter these things out. They can still be, you know, valid domains that some that the customer should consider to to register, but it won't be block, uh, blocked with the anti-abuse or the abuse shield product. So when it comes to how to use uh, the system and how to order blocks and so on, um, obviously the, the retail registrars are more likely to use the API and I can show you some examples of that. But if, um, if you were to block using the web portal, um, I can show you kind of like an early prototype of the flow of, um, of that and how that would work. So we could perhaps go into, let's say we wanted to do exact match blocking. And we want to do that for Walmart again. Um, what you would do is look up that label um, to check if it's eligible for blocking. In this case, it says uh, it's eligible and you need to supply some, uh, some evidence uh, in terms of a SMD file that you can upload. The next step in the process would be to select the TLDs that you want to use for this exact match blocking, meaning that you will block the domain name on that TLD. Um, you can choose here to you know, select from TLD groups. And these are just placeholders for now. It won't be this in the, in the released version. It's just examples where you can choose groups of TLDs. And you could also search for single TL TLDs so that you want to include. Um, after that, it's, um, the next step will be to add contact objects to it. That could either be yourself or, uh, or the client. So, so you want to add, but you need to attach it to a contact object. And it's through um, payment with credit card or, or from the ledger. So that's the process for blocking an exact match using the portal. In addition, you could also, if you wanted to, add the abuse shield as an add-on to the exact match blocking. And in that case, with Walmart, we run that through the variance generator, and it comes up with X amount of variants that you could add to the block. So in this case, the, the exact match block would block 21 TLDs because that's what you have chosen. If you add upon the, um, the abuse shield, it will block loads more, and um, and it will increase with the, with the amounts of TLDs that you that you add. So um, when it comes to the retail registrars, there's um, we have some drawings that can illustrate um, perhaps how this can be integrated um, into a checkout flow. So in this example, we have a, a retail registrar. There's a name spinner. Um, the customer has gone in and searched for a domain name. They get this traditional list of domain names presented. Um, they choose your domain, ABC, and add that to the cart. And at that point, they can be presented with this uh, Abuse Shield uh, product that they can add as an addition to, to their domain registration. 
And in, the, in this context, again, we, you would not block your domain.abc. It's all these variants that, that we saw earlier, and that was also illustrated with the funnel. After um, the point of this um, um, abuse variant being blocked, there's many ways you could use this list of valuable domain names. You could, for example, uh, you know, list them in the control panel for the customers to, to browse at, or, or you could send them out as an email afterwards saying that, congratulations on the Abuse Shield registration. Whilst doing that uh, check on your domain, we discovered this list of domain names that you think we think you should consider registering as well. So, so that's an example on, on that. So I think with that, um, I will turn it over to you, to you again, Pinky. Yeah, thanks, Michael. I'm I'm just blown away by by all that. It's it's quite evident there's a lot of of careful thought being put into making sure that you know appropriate labels um, for variants are you know being blocked and uh, and also a, quite a bit of thought about making sure that that labels that should not be blocked or that could be registered for standard you know revenue um, is in that in that process. So so thank you so much for all that. Um, so yeah, talking about a little bit about making sure that some names are are not blocked. Uh, you see this block exclusion list um, slide here on on the screen. So, uh, as we have been saying, you know, we're, we we uh, we're going to be managing that process. And so, through the registries, there'll be these block exclusion lists that don't allow blocks to be placed. So, when they matched uh, certain languages, for example, or certain city or state or, or geographic specific terms or names that match um, existing trademark terms. Um, there'll be some minimum character counts and, and all that sort of thing. And again, a lot of this detail will be available uh, to you, you know, once you sign uh, our NDA, if you have not done so already. And let's see the next slide, policy and, and onboarding. So you can connect, a registrar can connect the name block again through this, this API that Michael was describing that documentation is, is now available to you. And uh, just to reiterate, you know, what, what is the technical status, you know, of a block name? So those are names that are, are technically banned. So they're not available for registration. They don't resolve. They can't be used for email. Um, they show up as not available uh, in search results. And they do not, or they do not accumulate um, ICANN fees. In terms of data that we'll have access to, just building a little bit on what Michael was just saying, um, you know, we're going to be connecting to the backend service provider, and again, that allows uh, you as registrars to connect and and see and complete sales via the API. It's similar to a thin registry, but we're not going to be asking for any customer data, and all of the blocks that are registered at a registrar are in that that registrar's name block account. They'll be there. Uh, we will offer a who is service that will allow lookups uh, to determine if there's a block on a term, um, who the sponsoring registrar um, is associated with that block and the uh, the expiration date. So what's next? What? Um, how can you get involved? Um, what is the schedule? Uh, where are we on all this process? Um, you know, again, you can sign our NDA if you haven't done that, we'll communicate that pricing to you. You can uh, review and sign documentation um, because right now we have API access. We have access to um, the algorithms and uh, the registries can review and sign agreements. And in February, we'll be offering uh, access to our sandbox and then technical integration, as well as, uh, of course, the onboarding the, the uh, registries um, registrars also will be able to review and sign agreements um, during February. And also we will be working on the registry backend uh, integrations. And then we're expecting a launch in the springtime of this year. And uh, we will, of course, keep all of you updated uh, registrars on the registries that are signed in to the platform and signed up to the platform because we know that will be very important uh, in order for you to be able to sell the blocking uh, products. 
And with that, I think we can now get into uh, some questions, uh, maybe some frequently asked questions as well. Um, I do know that one question um, that comes up is, you know, do you provide upsell opportunities for registrars in addition to the block? And as I was um, mentioning earlier, you know, domain names are determined they're not blockable by our algorithm um, because they might be a generic word or something like that. You know, they're going to be highlighted and then they'll be suggested to the registrant um, as names they could consider registering. And then, then again, a separate list um, that is relevant to the block label from a pure brand protection uh, perspective can also be generated by us. And that can be sent to, to you, the registrar uh, or the registrant uh, to be completed perhaps after an anti-abuse variant block is, is purchased, or it could be used in a, in a pre uh consultation sales process perhaps with your with your customers uh can you test our connection prior to launch yeah uh, as i just mentioned you know we'll have a sandbox environment that will allow you to check uh, all of your your endpoints and you can go and get that now from us uh and then uh one of the questions is how are you going to approach a potential looks like ddos denial of service uh, issues. Um, anyone want to take that one, Michael or Rolf? Um, it it depends on in the, in which uh, uh, relation the the question is asked. Uh, when it comes to our platform and 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 uh, the ways you can connect to our platform, we will obviously protect that. Uh, with industry best industry standards against uh, the DOS attacks, um, but uh, if it comes to domain blocking, uh, we will typically not uh, provide any service for client DDoS protection using uh, domain blocking as as a service to to prevent that. At least that's not the thinking from uh, from the start. Thanks. Uh, another question was, um, how are disputes going to be handled? Um, our, uh, our dispute policy is being developed, uh, and that's going to be managed by uh, a very well-known dispute resolution provider, uh, forum, and, uh, we'll have more information available to you, uh, on that as we proceed. Let's see any other questions, um. Okay, no, we already did have that question. So I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Um, so is there a fee schedule or a pricing document that you can look at? Yes, um, we do have that and we can share it with you. If, uh, if, if you signed our NDA already, um, you should have received that. If you haven't, you know, let me know. Um, if you are just finding out about name block for the first time or you are curious um, and you, you know you have serious interest, again, sign our NDA, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, any other questions? It does not appear that there are any other questions at this time, um, but I do want to reiterate that you can ask us questions anytime. You don't have to sign NDA just to ask us questions. We're always gonna be happy to talk to you. I'm always happy to talk to, to anyone. Um, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us you can schedule a meeting uh, with me at ICANN 76. I'll be down in Cancun. Uh, you can write to us at hello at nameblock.com, uh, subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on social media, go to nameblock.com, of course, to be able to view some of our past webinars. Uh, and this one itself will be recorded and, and made available in case your colleagues were not able to attend today. Uh, but I believe that will do it. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to uh, spend time with us today and learn more about NameBlock. We're very grateful for your interest and we hope to be working with you shortly. So thanks again and have a good day.